uh, in today's session, rest of the session, uh, we will be dealing with certain specific special transforms. Uh, at this stage, it's difficult for me to convince you these are special. Why does one study this? Maybe by the end of the talk or end of this course, you will realize why these are important. These occur naturally in many physical phenomena like you want to study electrical field, magnetic field, gravitational field, in general field theory, or uh, you want to study in uh, fluid mechanics, you want to study movement of uh, these transforms are used classically. Uh, so these are important. That's all I can tell you right now. What are these special transforms? We will study them. Uh, we will study basically three transforms. One is uh, Wz given by z square. Remember, we have been doing bilinear transformations which were of the form Wz is equal to Az plus B divided by Cz plus D, where AB, AD minus BC was not zero. Uh, now we, we are not bilinear transformation. There is a square term, there is a quadratic term. It's like your high school. First you studied linear equations and then you studied uh, quadratic equations. Similarly, here transform is a quadratic that means wz goes to z square we will also study the calculus wz going exponential of z that is same as e power z x of z means e power z where e is that well known number oldest number uh, this is like your class 11 calculus uh, where you studied the exponential function of real numbers today we will study of basic things about exponential function of a complex number and then we will study what is known as uh, Shaukowski transformation uh, which is given by wz is equal to z plus 1 by z not this is not a bilinear transformation because if you evaluate this this will be z square plus 1 by z in bilinear transformation there is no square term so this has a square term so these are the three special transforms which are there in your syllabus so we will study these study means what what does study in these curves these uh, transforms means it basically means that i want to study uh, basically it means i want to study what happens to standard curves in z plane under these transforms that means we want to study image of few standard curves and regions regions in z plane how do they look in w plane once i take this transform this is the essence of studying these transforms mean so we will go one at a time uh, let's see how fast or what are, how much we can do so studying image of few standard curves which are the standard curves which we have studied the easiest curve we have studied simplest curve we have studied this first one is straight line parallel to x-axis remember again let me recall i have a z plane i have a w plane the mapping from z plane to w plane is w given wz given by z square in z plane i have variables x plus iy z is written as x plus iy and w is written as u plus iv these are all our standard notations i'm not keep recalling every time so now i want to talk about straight lines parallel to x-axis in z-axis z plane and i want to see what happens to what is the image of lines parallel to x-axis under this transform that is one thing i want to study another thing i want to study is this is what basically we will try to capture what are the easy curves which we want to study image of easy curves so first one was straight lines parallel to x-axis we will study straight lines parallel to y-axis also just you know the risk of boring you are emphasizing these are lines in z plane and we want to look at their images in w plane the another easy thing we did even in our uh, pre university course we did after studying straight lines we studied what is known as what are circles so easiest circles were circles with some radius with uh, center origin so that will, we will try to see what are the image of circles under these tra this transform but all three we will see 
to start with let us see what happens in wz going to z square on three transforms we will see images of these kind of curves these curves precisely and then more generally i want to study what happens to the image of center the image of a uh, circles whose center is anywhere and some fixed radius so basically we are going to see images of lines parallel to x axis parallel to y axis circles to center or origin circles to center could be anything these are the things we will study and also regions uh, not just curves we also want to study what happens to regions between lines parallel to x axis and y axis that means you know regions between lines parallel to x axis and y axis is going to be a rectangle so we want to see what happens in the rectangle particularly the rectangle happens to be a square i'm sure the image would look reasonably nice it should look let us see what those images are uh, today we will i will work out these images both algebraically and geometrically for your examination purposes working out of these algebraically is important but to understand this you must draw these figures so i will not i don't have energy to draw it on the board because my you know i can't draw very nicely i will use that software geogebra which i introduced in my first lecture to show the images of these curves so let's go slowly so for this transform first note these transforms have been selected carefully for this transformation first check that what is its derivative its derivative is 2z the new z going to z square this is an analytic function you have seen in your, your analytic where all its analytic you must have seen such things in your first module so you know how to find derivative of w z z square that is uh, 2z and this is equal to 0 if and only if z equal to 0 this means this mapping is not conformal only at 0 all other places it is zero we have used one of these uh, uh, results i told you this recall this result uh, a function an analytic function is conformal wherever its derivative is not zero so if its derivative is zero then it is not conformal there. this is what we have seen before i not proved this but i have given you this result so here derivative of z square is zero Only at z equal to zero. So except at z equal to zero, all other places, this transform is a conformal mapping. Conformal means angles are preserved. We will see such things today pictorially also. And uh, so this is what it says: W z equal to z square is conformal everywhere except at z equal to zero. So now I will start writing the image of under this map W z equal to z square. I'll start writing images of various standard curves which I told you. How do I start? To start with, of course, I must give the equation of the standard curve. To give the equation of the standard curve, I have to write it in terms of its x and y. This function x and y and u and v. So these are the standard notations which I already told you. We'll write w equal to u plus iv and z equal to x plus iv. If you substitute this note, w. He say I'll keep confusing between W and W Z. W is a function of Z, so sometimes I'll write only W, sometimes I'll write W of Z. Similarly for U and V also. Anyway, you see what I'm trying to do. So if you write W equal to U plus I V and Z equal to X plus I V, I'll have, I get this. U plus I V is X plus I Y whole square, which is same as X square minus Y square plus I times two X Y. Now So here U is the real part of W, V is the complex part of W, and for this function, real part is x square minus y square, and complex part is 2x square. So equate them. If this is a function, if this is an identity, then real part of this function must be equal to real part of this function, and complex part of this function must be equal to complex part of this function. So equating real and imaginary part. I get u of x y is x square minus y square, and v of x y is two x y. So this is the real part, and this is the complex part. Many times students get confused with where did this x y come from? 
This was you and suddenly it became you of XY. I told you, many textbooks will not keep saying, will not keep writing you of X comma Y. They just write you, just to say some, something on the printing. And also it looks ugly if I keep on writing U of X, Y, V of X, Y. Remember, when I write this W equal to U plus I, V, U is function of X and Y, both. If I change either X or Y, U will change, right? So U of U is a real function of two variables, that is X and Y. So I'll write U of X, Y, X square minus Y square, and V of X, Y is 2xy. How did I get this? Just substituting what I have function under consideration. Function under consideration is z equal to z square. In that I substitute w equal to u plus iv and z equal to x plus iv. So basically I want to study what happens to image of standard curves under these functions. So that's what study how u x y and v x y change with respect to each other as x and y change so that means as i change z changing z means changing x and y as i change x and y i want to see how u and v change with respect to each other so let us first take x equal to constant in this equation in this term u x y equal to x square minus y square and v x y equal to 2 x y let us check what happens if I take x equal to constant. This is purely algebraic. Second part, I'll show you all, show you all of this geometrically. So x equal to constant means these are lines parallel to y-axis. I want to see what happens to the images of lines parallel to y-axis. So you substitute x equal to constant in this equation. U x y is equal to x square minus y square and vxy is equal to 2xy. When I do that, I get this. vxy is c1 square minus y square. vxy is 2c1y. Basically, I substitute x equal to a constant, some constant. <coughs> well, so, we'll, I want to see how u and v are changing with respect to each other. u is now dependent on y, and v is also dependent on y, because x is constant. Now, if I somehow can, if I want to find out relation between u and v, I have to eliminate y. How do I eliminate y? From this equation, I can write y is equal to v by 2c1. From this equation, where my cursor is moving on your PPT, y is equal to v by 2c1, and in this, I substitute v by c1. U is e then I get, so that's how I eliminate y, I get uxy is equal to c1 square minus v by 2c1 whole square. You do usual algebraic manipulation. I have written it down neatly here. This will be u v square equal to minus 4 c1 square times u minus c1 square. I will not write down these details. I am sure you can do it and explain it to you orally again. If you write, I want to eliminate y between these two. What do I do? Make an expression for y in one and substitute in the other. Making solving for y from the second equation is easy. So y is equal to u by 2 c1. I substitute that in this equation, which will give me this equation. So now this is a relation between u and v when x is constant. Y could be anything, you don't care because we have eliminated y. So when x is constant and equal to c1, this is how v and u change with respect to each other. Now the question: what is this curve? Means this is a curve in u v plane. U v plane is same as w plane. So the image of x equal to constant is some curve in u v plane. What is this curve? It is a curve which we all see several times before. Remember, if you think of v as y axis and u as x axis, this relation is square of the y axis, means square of the variable on y axis is equal to some linear term coming from x variable, that is u, because u is there is no square, u power is 1 here, and here of course it is 0. Uh, so degree 1 this is, so this is degree 2. So it is a conic section between, in u we play. So which conic section is this? You must have done in your class 12 standard kind of results. And I am telling you this uh, curve is nothing but a parabola in w play. Okay. 
can be sure. We will try to I'll try to show you this in uh, GeoGebra. This is a parabola in W1 uh, W plane. So v square is equal to minus 4 c1 square times u, u minus c1 square. What kind of parabola is this? We can see uh, v is positive or negative. It's the same value. It's v1 replaced by minus 1 also it's the same thing. So for, uh, it will be uh, symmetrical about real axis and its vertex is c1 square comma 0 uh, and focus is origin. So all this you must have seen in the standard classification of conic sections in your class 12. So I am using that. So what we see algebraically is image of x equal to c1 is this parabola in w plane which is symmetrical about real axis with its vertex at c1 square comma 0 and focus at origin. So we don't know which side it opens up. This parabola opens up either, you know, in either direction. It's symmetric about real axis. So it will be opening up at towards positive x axis or negative x axis. We'll have to check that. That depends on the value of c1 square because you see this is minus 4 c1 square. Let us check these kind of things geometrically later. And you have to observe that uh, in this equation, if you replace c1 by minus c1, I will get the same equation because both are c1 square and c1 square here. So that means if you take lines parallel to x axis, whichever way, wherever you take, whether you take on the first and fourth quadrant or second and third quadrant, images will be same. But what algebraically what I am trying to tell you is if you take x equal to minus c1, that will also get mapped to the same thing, same parabola. Now take y equal to constant. So now what we have to do is, so what, let me recall what we have done. What we have done is by in this, in this, oops, in this set of equation, that is in this transformation wz equal to z square, I have taken x equal to constant and shown you the images are these parabola. Parabola and W plane, which are symmetrical about real axis and its vertex at c1 square comma 0 and focus at the origin. And lines parallel to x axis anywhere, even sorry, x equal to parallel to y axis in second, third quadrants also will be same parabola. This is what we have seen. Now, as I told you in the big, we also want to see what are the images of lines parallel to x axis, that means y is constant. Now again, I will take same, in the same equation, u x y equal to x square minus y square and v x y is equal to 2x y. This we got it because we equated real and imaginary parts of the transform z going to z square. If you take y is constant, you will get this set of equations. Same procedure, whatever you did for uh, x equal to constant, you do this. Now eliminate x between these two in a similar way. x is equal to whatever v divided by 2c2 you substitute, you get a parabola again. Again, you get a parabola symmetrical about real axis whose vertex is minus 3 to square comma 0 this time. So this is and uh, so I'll algebraically tell you everything and then I'll show you geometrically how do they look. Next, we want to study. So we have studied, we have I shown you two images of two particular curves. One lines parallel to x-axis, one lines parallel to y-axis, both turned out to be parabola. So now the next thing we want to do is image of a circle with radius r and center 0. That means the usual center x square plus y square equal to 1 or x square plus y square equal to r square. So that is what it is. What happens to that? Uh, experience tells us that when you are dealing with circles, it is better to take polar coordinates instead of x plus i y. I will not write the equation x square plus y square equal to r square. Instead of that, I will use polar coordinates representation of complex numbers, which is z is equal to r times exponential of i theta. I am sure you know this uh, polar coordinates of complex numbers. That means the radius is r and angle is theta is in the positive sense, which is in the sense of counterclockwise from positive x-axis. That is the uh, meaning of this polar coordinates. Substitute this w 
substitute this z equal to up so upshot of this is this equation z equal to r exponential of i theta gives me a circle centered at origin of radius r in z plane now i want to see what happens to this in w plane that means i want to see image of this curve under this transformation what do i do to substitute this there no so this the expression is w z is equal to z square so substitute z is equal to r exponential of i theta so you get w is equal to r exponential of i theta whole square the whole square means this is nothing but capital r in this notation these are all neatly written that's all you have to dirty your hands at least once writing down all these things this is r square exponential square i theta which is same as exponential exponential i times 2 theta which means r capital r exponential of i phi where capital is r is r square and phi is 2 theta so this is the curve this is you see in w plane capital r and phi are the variables means they are the ones which uh, polar coordinate representation of any complex plane in w plane will be given by this this is nothing but this is another circle r exponential e power i phi will tell me this point is on a circle of radius capital r this w is a point on a circle in w plane to of radius r and angle is phi phi is 2 theta what this means is uh, this is another which goes around the origin twice origin in w plane i should have written which goes around origin in w plane twice that means once you go around z plane once in w plane you will have gone twice around the origin again i will show this to you in the geogebra in few minutes but right now algebraically these are the expressions uh this i leave it as an exercise find the image of a circle with radius r and center a so the expression is z is equal to a plus r exp exponential of i theta a is zero i'll get this is a circle whose center is zero but now if i want it i translated it by a this is a bilinear transformation what i have done just translate everything by a that means the whole circle is translated by a and then if you substitute this that means if you find z square now w equal to z you substitute this in w z equal to z square that means you take the square of it and simplify it you will get this which is lima form you must have seen this curve in the first year first semester in some curves and you know there are some words i remember in top this kind of thing so this is the easy exercise but again i have showed all this in geogebra uh one more thing which is interesting you should be doing in your uh, geogebra is the following sketch the region bounded by x equal to c1 x equal to c2 y equal to d1 y equal to d2 we have seen what happens to this curve this will be a parabola this will be another parabola this will be another parabola this will be another parabola each of the parabola will have different focus foci different uh, symmetry about x axis so you have to find what happens to region between them under w z equal to z again i show this in geogebra i'm sure you can figure this out so before we go to the next important linear transform uh, transform and transformation i would like to show you in geogebra what happens to uh, so what happens to this transformation let us see it geometrically so what i will do is uh, i hope at least some of you have tried out some geogebra uh, when you open geogebra of course you will get only one screen i open two screens graphic 1 and graphic 2 this is my z plane and this is my w plane and i want to show you the transformation wz going to z square and i want to show you image of some standard curves first first as a first step let us draw some standard curves so let us draw a line parallel to x axis so let us take a easy one so here and here this is a line parallel to x axis i don't want to see a and b Oops, sorry i don't want to see a and b so i'm sorry
I'm drawing a line parallel to I don't want to see A and B. I have drawn a line parallel to uh, this x axis, the y axis I have drawn first. Okay, doesn't matter. So I have drawn a line parallel to y axis and uh, that is called F. You saw how to draw it. Just play around with GeoGebra a little bit. You will see how to do that. Uh, if you want to draw it parallel to x axis also, it's easy. All you have to do is you want to do that on the first because in our see, you can just move it appropriately. This has become a line parallel to x axis. Now, of course, you can move the whole thing. For example, you can move this is the power of GeoG. You can try out these kind of things. Now, I want to move a point on this line. So, first I have to fix up a point. So, I will take a point. I want it to be a complex number. So, I want a point on this object, which is this object straight. So, I, I don't even want, okay, let it be done. Now, I want to see its image. So, I want to see its image means I will write B is equal to C. Uh, just one minute, I should have done a small change here. I want to show C as uh, a complex number, correct? So, I know these are not in your syllabus, but it will help you to understand many of these things. So, you see, now you see, when I move C here, you will see the coordinates, you must watch here, coordinates of C are changing. So, this is how you move in complex plane, in W, uh, in Z plane. This is my Z plane and I am moving the point and wherever I take my cursor, the point is moving there. For example, here it is 0 plus i, here it is 1 plus i, here it is whatever, 1.58 plus i, here it comes minus 3.16 plus i. So basically I am changing, moving my point on the Z axis, uh, in the Z plane and I have constrained it to move only on uh, the line parallel to x axis, this particular line y equal to 1. I can change that later, I will show you how to make it to, to various other lines. Now what I want is, I want to write b equal to c star c. So this point I want to be, see d right now, one minute, right now d is being shown here only, in z plane only. I don't want that. I want it to be seen in W plane. I have decided this is my W plane. If you want, uh, you can get grid here also. Yeah, here also, if you want, you can get grid, but let's not get into it. Let's not get it so that we can make out the difference between W uh, Z plane and W plane. Uh, I want B also to be a I want to show, see its trace, that means I want to see how D is moving when I change C, I'll give a different color to it and I want it to be seen in graphics 2 or not in graphics 1, uh, algebra it is complex number anyway. So you can see, now you can see, if I move C, if I move C, D will also move and it will move its trace also. That means B, C is 1, it is showing me B is, sorry, C is not 1 here. C is 0 plus i, that is where it is. You see, I move uh, my point, this is my real axis, this is my imaginary axis in Z plane. When C is at 0 plus i, you can see C square is minus 1. Of course, that is true, i square is minus 1. Similarly, as I move C, you will see D is moving. What you are seeing is whatever you saw algebraically that time. That as if you take you may, this is what you see in black here in Z plane is the curve y equal to one, and what you see in red is its image in Z plane. Now, once I move it, it will get erased. But I, I can do it also, no problem. You see, as my point is moving on <clears throat> this line, which is parallel to x-axis on in z-plane, you can see what all the images of 
C, which I have called it D here, I defined that. D is equal to C into C. These are rotations of GeoGebra. You can figure out what got a bit of GeoGebra, then you will see. This is C star C, but you don't see star here, that doesn't matter. So, and then I also given, asked you to give me the trace. If you don't like trace, for example, you don't like to see all its uh, points, you can see uh, as I change D, as I change C, D is varying. Correct? It looks like a parabola. It is a parabola. If you want to see it as a parabola, you just ask it to show its trace. Then it will show you where our trace means locus of D. It's clearly a parabola. Right? You will see this more. Uh, for example, I want to move, I'll move this line itself to something else. Uh, this is a large number, so you can see it has gone somewhere else. This is a large number, so C has, D has gone somewhere else. It has not moved so far, it has here. So this we saw, and it has moved here. So, so when, now I have taken a line which is parallel to X axis. But y equal to 2, as you can see, okay, y equal to 1.9, doesn't matter. So it is not going exactly at 2, that's okay, doesn't matter. Some line parallel, some line parallel to x axis other than y equal to 1. So if I move my c on this, you will see d is also describing a bigger parabola. You see, that means its focus and vertex have changed. Ah, vertex, you should have seen the vertex. That part we did not take. See, vertex is minus 4, 0. It's almost minus 4. It's just slightly 4.08 or something like that. Some very small number. So if it were exactly, this line were exactly y equal to 2, then you would have to see it. Focus would have been, or not focus, vertex would have been 4. So this is the parallel. What this is saying is, if you move, if you move my, if you move your z on a different line, the parabola also has changed. This has become a different parabola. You can move this to anywhere, it doesn't matter. For example, here I am. So now you see it gives me a different parabola. Every time it gives a different parabola, obviously that was the equation which we saw. The equation of this parabola, what you see on your uh, screen. This is the one. This is the d square equal to minus 4 c1 square u minus c1 square. That is what you are seeing here. This is what you are seeing here for different values of C, C1. Similarly, I, I also want you to note that if you take this, this is the parabola you will get. You will get the same parabola if you move this curve to this. You see, you come on this and the same parabola, which is, that's what I told you that time, that the, if you take x equal to c1, y equal to c1 or y equal to minus c1, both will come to the same parabola. Basically, we have done all this algebraically. I want you to see it geometrically. Here. And then if you want to see the same thing, what happens to this point when uh, I take lines parallel to y-axis, how do I do? So I am I know these things are going a bit fast, fast for you, but don't bother about it. If you study, if you play around with GeoGebra, you know what I'm doing. But final thing I can show you. Uh, if you take a line parallel to y-axis, you see you have taken a line parallel to y-axis, and I'll make my C move on this. Then you see D is moving in a parabola the other way. If you move C even closer to this, you will see this is a different parabola. If you move this even closer, parabola, you see, correct? I hope I am making you understand. These lines don't bother. I am not such an expert in GeoGebra to know how to, to show you how to eliminate this. This is, these traces are coming because I am moving the line here. It doesn't matter. You see here. These are the various parabola 
these are the images of various lines let me show you one more i will try to show what happens this parabola so this one this see here so this was what the parabola we got when the lines were parallel to x axis when i make the lines parallel to y axis the parabolas parabola moved in the other direction so note such things all these things we have seen already in uh, algebraically we have seen these kind of things okay and then uh, this is always we have shown you now. whatever geometric whatever algebraically we figured out i have shown you geometrically now let us check image of a circle of center uh, so i don't want any of these now so let me delete this okay now i want i want to draw a circle geogebra has fantastic tools i can immediately draw a circle of say radius 2 it's very easy you see and now i don't want to see the I don't want to see these uh, points, so I'll not. I'll leave uh, them. And now I want to choose a point on this object, so I have chosen. That means C is a point on this circle whose radius is something 2.4.0 uh, root of 4.06. I can take moving that. That's not a problem. To move that, all I need to do is make B go to a problem. So, this is okay. So point C, I want it to look like a complex number. So I go to the setting. I know these things, if you are not used to GeoGebra, you might find it a bit confusing, but don't bother. You play with GeoGebra, you will understand all these things. And C, uh, B is equal to C star C, that is C into C. I'll show you here. And I want to, uh, this, I want to see its trace. Okay, first I have not seen its trace, just to show you what it looks like. Uh, I want it to be seen in graphics too. These settings don't bother too much. If you play with GeoGebra, you know what I am doing. But what you need to know for your course is, see how D will change once I am changing C. So C is moving on a circle and D is moving on in w plane so let me redo it for you check this so c when it is equal to you can see you will have to see it, the values of c and d here c is when it is 2 d is of course 4 it's square 2 square is 4 that's why it is at 4 comma 0 as i change c you will see d will also keep changing note how much it changes for example when i move this to 90 degrees that means it's not it. So it is 0 plus 2i, correct? So I moved my C from here to here, which means this angle. You must see my cursor. This angle is pi by 2. That time D moved from here to here. How do I know it moved from there to there? Okay. I'll show you. For that, one needs to use trace. So let us see the trace of D. So once I move my C from here to here, I have moved C only quarter of a circle as you can see when I move quarter of a circle D has moved half of a circle correct right? that means D is moving at the double the speed of C if I move only angle for example you see okay, sorry let me show it again if I move pi by 4 the D will have already moved pi by 2 see this is pi by 4 1.43 approximately C 1.43 and 1.4 so these, these two are say so this is 45 degrees oc is 45 degrees i mean c o c o and this this angle is 45 degrees i mean this is theta is pi by 4 then you see already 5 is pi by 2 twice pi by 4 so what i'm trying to tell is when i move c by angle theta d has moved two two times theta Can you see that See, if it comes to pi by 2, it has already come to pi. D angle D here is pi, whereas C is only pi by 2. This is what we saw algebraically our equation. 
and by the time C comes to half a circle, D has completed one full circle. Correct? Now, if it continues, D will of course it will continue in the same thing. So, what I am trying to tell here is, when C moves around the circle once, C, D will have moved around the circle twice. That is what our algebraic equation also showed. Just go back and see. Here it said, you see, if W, uh, Z is equal to R exponential of I theta, then W is capital R exponential of I phi, where phi is twice the theta. Capital R is R square. That's okay. That, yeah, that shows the radius of the circle. Radius of the circle is square of whatever is the radius of this circle. That is easy to see. Uh, you see, if you change the circle radius, sorry, I want to change the circle radius. Do I change the circle radius? Yeah, it is. So you can change it to 9 and go out of the screen. So I'll make it smaller. So 1.5. Okay. So 1.5 is here approximately. The radius of circle is 1.5 because you can see x square plus y square is 2.25. Correct? So the circle is 1.5. Now when I move the point C, I don't want to see B. Uh, if I want to move C, See, the radius of this circle is 2.25. And same thing happens. When I move around this circle once, D will have moved around this circle twice. That's what that equation said. And it is true. In GeoGebra, you can actually see this. Right? Very good. And <clears throat> what else did you see? Uh, so this part we have seen. Ah, this was the other thing which you have seen. Which is the one, if you take a circle with radius anything and center anywhere. I wanted to show you that it's a lima cord. So now let us move A and B. Oh, A can't be moved. It's not an independent cord. Okay. So I'll change the definition of this. Don't worry. See if it works. I am also not an expert in GeoGebra. No, it doesn't work. I want to. So let's redo it. No problem. What to redo? I'll tell you. What I'm trying to show you here is if I move the circle to somewhere else, then. So let me delete all these things. Don't want all this. So now what I will do is I will draw a circle whose center is not origin and radius something, and then I'll show you the image of that. So center. Say I'll take, let's take a near, near the point, 1 comma 1. This is the center, I have complex numbers. Center is this and center is Z1 and the radius is say 1. Let us take this easier. Let us take this easier. So this is the equation of the circle as you can see on your screen. Now, I don't want to see this. Send the origin is in there. So now I will pick a point on the circle. So I picked a point on the circle. Now that is called B. I want to write, or if you want, you can make it complex number. So, yeah, I mean, it really doesn't make so much difference. But uh, since it's a complex course, a number course in complex numbers, I will use this. Point B, you see, what I what I've done here is, I am made sure that I can move point B on this circle. Now, I want to see what happens to the image of B under the map Z equal to Z square, W equal to Z square. So let me define that. I'll call C is equal to B into B. Okay. And I want this to be, I want to see, first I will not see the trace. Uh, I want to see its color is different. I want to see it being seen in graphics 2, but not in graphics 1. And algebra is in your complex number, so no problem. So you see here, if I move my C, 
here also looks like oh is it a circle or not no it looks like it is not a circle you see some something is going wrong correct you see the tray so how to make out what to see i mean how to make out what is the locus so i'll ask you to show the trace so when i move b you see how the image of b square is it's not a circle it's what is known as a lima cone you saw the equation of this i given it to you in the notes i given it to you in the, when, we, when i showed you the picture that i showed you see this is the image of the circle this is a circle whose center is z1 and radius is 1 that you can make out from this screen here so when i move b on this so this is that is how b moves note this is because much bigger obviously i'm making square and what i want you to watch is uh, you see that you can change the radius of the circle uh, how to do it yeah center is 1 and uh, it's too big actually Do this. Yeah, it's here. So now, if my b moves on the circle of some other radius, this is radius root two. You can see, you can see this is circle. X minus one whole square plus y minus whole square equal to two. So root two whole square. So radius is root two. Now you see how the lemma form looks like. See, it's more pronounced now. So you got it hard. Correct. Please note. that i am not drawing that red curve i have only given it as a function and as i move the this point b on the circle i can see what is the locus of its image i mean i hope you will also enjoy doing many of these things uh, i want to show you we play around with this it's pretty interesting so let us move the circle itself now so if it comes here what happens now A also I want to move. A so the center is in the third quadrant and rest all continues. So let us see where is my B. I can't see already. I don't want to see A. I don't want to see. I don't get it. So when I move B, what happens? Let us check. See, it's a very big lemma form. So let us try to make this radius a bit smaller. After the this two bigger radius. In Z plane or W plane, it is going very far, so I can't uh, show you the whole thing. So I'll make it slightly smaller, and uh, then I'll move B. This is the lemma form. Now the lemma form looks in a different way. You see, when it when my center is in the third quadrant. Similarly, you will have to see if my center is in the second quadrant, what happens. center in the second quadrant then what happens this is the lemma form you can see all this is seeable but it will take a bit more time in the, i'll reduce the radius and shape that's the fastest way of doing it This is how lemma form will look. So if you, you see that, so lemma form has got inverted now. If you reduce the radius even further, so this is the other lemma form. You get a family of lemma forms. One, you see. as b is moving it's showing you its image this was the exercise which i gave and the equation for this lemma form what you saw here this funny heart kind of heart shaped curve is basically capital r is 2r into a plus uh, r cos theta so theta is the angle of the z z plane and phi is the angle here there's no phi so it doesn't matter so this we have seen now let us in the last 10 minutes i want to show you another transformation so this part is over geogebra this part is over here. so i'll delete all this because i want to get ready for the next one okay so
Next is, ah, this is one thing I didn't show, but I can do it in the video. I will be written as an exercise here. Stick the region bonded by x equal to c1 and x equal to c2. And y equal to d1, y equal to d2. In GeoGebra, we saw all this. We saw what happens at x equal to c1, it's a parabola. x equal to c2, it's another parabola. Similarly, you draw y equal to d1, y equal to d2. Find that will be a rectangle in z plane. Now, see what happens to that in w plane. They are easy to do by using GeoGebra. So, I will not spend time on that. Next important transformation is exponential matter. That is, WZ is equal to X, EXPZ. This is clearly conformal because we take derivative of this X power Z, derivative is exponential XZ itself, E power Z itself. So that is never zero. Exponential of something is never zero. So this is conformal everywhere. Uh, you, I just want to, I just want you to observe that in uh, WZ equal to Z square. At origin, things were not conformal. The angles were not being preserved. You can play around with GeoGebra and see all these things uh, for yourself. And now uh, you want to find how does U and E change with respect to each other when I change Z, that means when I change X and Y. Like the previous case, you write W equal to U plus IV. So W is UXY plus IXY is exponential of X plus IY. So you write it as E power X plus E power IY. This is same as e power x. I'm just writing it as a real and complex part so that I can get u of x y expression and v of x y expression. So e power x cos y. You see e power x cos y. Uh, got a mistake here. E power x cos x. It should be. This is not cos y. No, no. One minute. U x y. So what is the real part of this? E power. Uh, this is not cos x. This is uh, typing mistake. Uh, e power x comes out, e power i y is, uh, this is cos y, I'm sorry, this is cos y, so then you get e power x into cos y and v x y is e power x sin y, so now u x y looks like this, v x y looks like this, again eliminate x and y to get relation between x and y, uh, u and u, first easy to eliminate y, this square plus this square. That is u square plus v square equal to e power 2x. And eliminating x, that's easy. That is just divide one by the other. Divide u x y by v x y. Or rather, v x y by e x y. You get v by u is equal to tan y. There are, uh, whatever you must have done, these kind of things in PUC several times. Now, so this is the relation. When I eliminate y, I get this u square plus v square equal to e power 2x. Watch here. u square plus v square equal to e power 2x. Basically, square of this plus square of this is equal to e power x whole square. Now, if you take x equal to constant in this, obviously, u square plus v square is a constant square. So, u square plus v square is constant is a circle. Play around with GeoGebra. I won't have time to do that. I've already taken too much time for this transforms. But it's worth it. Geometrically, you need to understand all these things. So, this is a circle. So, that means what happens is, if you take x equal to, this is what it says, the x equal to constant lines will get mapped to circles in u equal. That is what conclusion of this is. And similarly, if you take uh, where you have eliminated y, where, where you have eliminated x, v by u is tan y. So in that case, if v by u is tan y, if y is constant, v by u is constant, which means they are lines passing through origin. It's like v equal to constant times u, so y equal to mx kind of thing, but y is v and x is u here. So this will be a straight line. Uh, maybe how two minutes, I just very quickly show you the uh, graph here. Uh, so I want to write, I want to pick up, a, so I want to first draw a straight line. Just I'll draw a straight line parallel to y axis and then I will pick a point on this. Good. I don't want to see this. And I want to uh, write this as uh, complex number. So that means C is a complex number moving on this line. Now I want to define B is equal to exponential of C exponential of c okay now 
this is a complex number and I want to see, I want to I'll see its trace later, I'll see its color. Don't bother if you don't understand all this. If you play with GeoGebra, you'll understand this. But the important thing for me is you understand the image. Now you see, if I move C, what happens to B? That means under this map, B equal to E power C. So that, that means that is my Z going to W going equal to E power Z, exponential of Z. Looks like it's a circle. How to make sure it is a circle? Let us see the trace. When you move this, you see it's a circle. So that means lines parallel to y axis are going to circles. You play around with this a bit more, try putting this somewhere else, you see it's become a smaller circle. You try putting this farther away, then it will become a larger circle. You can't see it here, it's somewhere here. Three, four, five. So it's somewhere here. Where did it go? I can't see it here right now, but I'm sure you can move it and see. And see, this is a larger circle. So if you reduce this W plane, if you contract it, then you can see all the circles also. And similarly, you can try to see what happens to lines parallel to x-axis. So let us move this whole thing. And then, These are straight lines passing through origin. You see, let us move to this part. You see, these are straight lines passing through origin. So you can see W. This is W and this is Z. As Z is changing, you can see what is happening to W. So all this we have seen here in this part. When Y is constant, what happens? X is constant, what happens? Uh, you can go home and check that angle surface are conformal. We have seen the algebraic uh, I have shown you geometrically also now. I think I am past my time. I will stop here. Uh, tomorrow we will see the other Joukowsky transformation also, which is Z, uh, W is Z plus 1 by Z. And then we will move on to complex integral. So please try to use this GeoGebra and try to play around with various curves and their images under these standard transformations. That's what I do for Z plus O and also.